Hey everybody, it's John Stetch. I want to talk about rhythm today and some of the things that I think about. Uh, some of these things are designed more for beginners, but then I'll talk about some more advanced concepts too. And why don't we start with, if someone is kind of new to the piano, piano is different than other instruments in that, let's say wind instruments, you can only play one note at a time. But with piano, that's part of the challenge is playing all these different things. So let's get started with, keep a metronome like this, with, with just C or any note. And then I'm gonna play a C up here together. And let's do a swing rhythm, like a da 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 This is in my head, the swing rhythm, right? And now, do off beats. So one, two, three, Four. I change the articulation and volume in both just for practice, right? Like some long, some short, and then reversed, some, some staccato. Okay, so now, what about uh, a Charleston rhythm? So, dotted quarter and an eighth, right? Four. And then how about endless Charleston? So And then if you want to add the octave, that makes it even a little bit more complicated. And it gives a nice two feel. So like one, two, one, two, one, two. So that if you have something tertiary going on here, then it's gonna sound cool with this uh, duple thing. Okay. Another thing is I feel like people's improvised solos should sound or look good on paper if someone transcribed them, transcribed only the rhythm. Uh, just looking at the rhythm alone, it should look kind of interesting and there should be some development. Not all the time, because you might have something like, then that won't look very interesting as a rhythm, but it does sound great when you add the pitch. So I understand, like sometimes there's gonna be things that just sound quite beautiful when you have the pitches added in, but it should also look reasonably often uh, interesting rhythmically. And that's the thing I complain about make quite a bit with students. So how do you do that? Well, if you look in any Beethoven book or uh, Chopin or something, and, and there's always uh, rests. So there's phrases and then a rest. So there's usually a group of notes and then a rest. So you can practice those too, right? And we're just starting to do that a little bit. So let's say, oh, uh, what, what could it be? Oh. Okay, one, two, three, four. Let's say if you do uh, just a scale. That's pretty easy, right? But let's just do only three. Uh, Now let's make the top two notes disappear in the right hand. So, so that turns into a dotted quarter note, which is great practice for anyone on piano. It just is. So, see, I made the other two notes disappear and only accented that first one. So what's another one? Um, how about let's just stay on C and then just uh, repeat the note, but then add different amounts of rests and different amounts of ons and offs, you know, like zeros and ones. So. Right, you should be able to do that. And that wasn't even that crazy, right? That was a group of, at the end there, there was a group of four and then an eighth note rest, I think. Da, da, da. Well, something like that. It was like, uh, yeah, group of four eighth notes and then a rest. But you can make up a whole bunch of things, so. That's good. Yeah, that's like two on and then one eighth note off. So you should be able to do that. And then you could uh, eventually, the one note is pretty easy, right? But then try to 
having different notes or play through a song even and try those those little rhythms okay the other thing uh so this is more of a piano technique thing but what i notice is uh when people do uh, the word students of minor when they play start using different dynamics and articulations sometimes the time and for me too <laughs> the time will get a little bit off so it shouldn't though right you should have ideally perfect time even though you're changing the volume and the dynamics and the length and the duration of the note so i'll show you what i mean so let's just do um i don't know i'll play c major scale or something let's do a c major arpeggio instead okay and i'm going to change the duration of the the eighth notes of uh, the quarter notes let's see quarter notes well do, okay i'll do eighth notes da, da. Da, 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 eighth notes, eighth notes, okay? And I'm going to change the uh, articulation and dynamics, but I'm going to still try to keep good time, okay? Yeah, so that sounds kind of easy, but I don't think it is. And I, I know I couldn't do that uh, maybe 25 years ago. So maybe uh, if you have tape yourself, then you'll know. <laughs> okay, another thing is, uh, well, let's just do F for a second here. Yeah, that's the other thing is when you're repeating one note, if you change dynamics, it gets harder. It gets a little bit harder to keep consistent, keep a, a perfect time. So let's just try F. See, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so it wasn't perfect, but you know what I mean? Like that, you should work on that too. And now let's talk about, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. You should be able to do practice some rubato stuff too. Uh, you can do this over a song. I'm just keeping it simple for now for, yeah, to, to make the point. But of course you could do this over one of your tunes that you like. Okay. So I'm keeping a very solid left hand, right? And then I'm going to do a rubato right hand. So. So I don't know if it was perfect, but it wasn't bad. Um, and I'm, so I'm trying to just uh, play out of time. Not you, you wouldn't be able to define what it is, right? It's just odd on purpose because the whole practice here is to keep that steady beat going because that will happen in life, right? Where, where you're going. Uh, purposely forced that you know a lot there I wouldn't maybe normally do all that but uh, that's good practice what else can we talk about oh yeah there's uh yeah the, the neat thing about piano in the groupings what's so awesome and you could of course you can do this on wind instruments too but piano you have this uh, huge range right where you've got these big bass notes and you've got two hands so you can cross over and jump up to a pretty high note and go way to a low note so it's a little bit different and also the repetition thing is well it's just a physically different thing than wind instruments in that in that um there's a, a bunch of math involved simple math but also different fingers will give you different accents and also different numbers so if i play two two notes with right hand and one with the left hand And I'm adding in another lower one, right? So the 
whole the whole uh, repetition thing is just a it's a nice thing because it's part of this percussion instrument. Let me give you an example. And the other thing is the crossing over and stuff. So I, that's another good exercise to do. Let's, let's just say practice C major arpeggio, but different combinations of it. So different inversions, spacings, and oblique motion and all that. So what, I'll show you what I mean. So broken C major chords, right, basically. Uh, in, a, in a simple world, it would sound like this. Right? That's not bad practice, right? But let's make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to spread out the arpeggio more. I did a few passing tones, but... I'm just I'm randomly playing these C major notes, sometimes jumping in to get another repeat with the other hand, or sometimes jumping in with either hand. And then the combination, uh, the practice is to try to keep a good tempo, because it is easy when you're using both right and left. Uh, sometimes the tempo can just get a little bit away from you, and you can rush a little or drag just because something physically happened that kind of threw things off. So let's see if I can do this. Uh, so I'll go a little faster. One, two, three, four. And I'm just playing in C major, right? Okay. Let me do B flat. Ah. have like two in one hand three in the I, I at one point a few years ago I wrote down a combination uh, kind of like a little code I don't know what I did with the piece of paper but I tried writing down like two fingers two notes with one hand three notes with the other so like simple math right so and then four notes with one hand two with the other three notes with one hand and five with the other and all this kind of stuff and then I just sat around for hours and I, I practiced all these combinations so I feel a little bit better now about improvising that stuff, but it'd be, it would be more perfect if I just really work something out, so. And then if you add repeats in there, it gets even crazier, so. See, this is a four. And then I'm gonna repeat it with the right hand. Some uh, neighbors, neighbor notes, so chromatic neighbors and whatnot. So, ah. I mean, I'm just making it up on the fly, but yeah, that's a, a nice thing to work on as a pianist just because of that range. You've got the two hands. What's hard is uh, to make both hands sound like one, as because what will happen often is uh, the dominant hand will just have a slightly different accent or different rhythm than the other one, and then it's a dead giveaway and you can hear it on a recording. So it's better if they just kind of work together as though it sounds like, almost like one hand playing. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is maybe triple meter has some interesting things in it. Uh, four, four, yeah, but but th three is really interesting, like because then there's nine, there's six, eight, twelve, eight, and all these kind of three, three related things. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we have a waltz. Just give yourself like a G major triad waltz. And then if you do the grouping thing, like uh, G A B.
becomes nine, almost like a one. Or six. Let's try to do nine. Uh, here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. thing like a two over nine. Um. And even though thirds on the piano, like if I play a third interval, even though that's not really related to time, sometimes I fantasize in my dream world that it is somehow, or I want to make it, I want to make a reference to it. Because if we're playing in triple meter, then maybe I want to play thirds. And I don't know, it, it doesn't really work, but it's just kind of like fun to think of those things because maybe they are related. And then uh, groups of four over three are kind of fun, like go. Uh, right, that's four. Well, let's do the waltz. I think anyone can do this because uh, you, we know the feeling of four, right? Like four fingers, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. And that's the thing that makes it a bit easy to practice at least because you know that you're just doing simple things that are physically, you can actually feel them. Another example of that is five. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It's so uh, you can just physically feel it. So even if your ear doesn't like it and you're getting lost, it doesn't matter. You can still feel that commitment to one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. it up but uh, so just yeah, try different combinations it's like this the math is really simple but the playing is kind of really hard in a way just for the physical coordination the other thing I like to do sometimes is uh, it's in this Beethoven number uh, fourth fourth movement of this sonata arrangement that I made and I think it's uh, I think it's like a one to the one to the one to the one to the one and, so it's a three thing and then I do a group of four on top of it uh, and you can make one louder than the other one, right? So I made, you can make one disappear, kind of like those Escher drawings where the stairway looks like it's going up and then it actually looks like it's going down or something or you can see either one in the pic picture. So I like that kind of stuff because it's like a... sounds very much like 6-8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But, add a little pedal to make it louder. And then bring in the right hand. The right hand's going to be 4 now. I can do a more pleasant sound too. Huh? louder now. And then I ended up turning into a 4-4 polka. But I like that where you create kind of illusion where people can't decide what you are and then you show them. I could have gone to the other one too and highlighted that more, like the 3 instead of the 4. But that's about all I can think of right, right now for today. So I uh, hope that helps and happy practicing.